suck on them and put them in your mouth that, you know, if you're too high, because beta caryophylline has been shown to be a CB2 receptor agonist and CB2 receptor agonists can help with anxiety that if you suck on something or put something in your body that has beta caryophylline in it, that it's going to activate these receptors and reduce your anxiety. That's pretty much the foundation to this black peppercorn claim. So you may have heard the claim that if you get too high and anxious or paranoid, that you should suck on some black peppercorns because there's a variety of things in those black peppercorns that will ease your anxiety for, well, a bunch of different reasons. Well, in this video, I'm gonna break down why that doesn't quite make sense based off of the research that we have today. We do not have any definitive data that shows that when THC is present, that black peppercorn compounds can come in and you know diminish a high or diminish the anxiety. And I'm gonna share some opinions that may go against your personal experience. So if you've sucked on some black peppercorns before because you got too high and it helped, great, we're glad it happened. But just be mindful of the fact that it very well could have been the placebo effect that helped you, not the black peppercorns. So there's a couple different theories that I've heard as to what compounds in black peppercorn could help diminish a high and severe anxiety from being too high. However, there's only one that really makes a lot of sense to begin with, so that's what I'm gonna focus on today. And that theory is that black peppercorns have beta caryophylline, which is a type of terpene, and beta caryophylline is considered to be a CB2 receptor agonist a partial agonist actually, meaning that it has the ability to essentially bind to the CB2 receptor and activate it. Now research shows that CB2 receptors can help diminish anxiety, but these are primarily in vitro, so cell studies or mouse studies, not human studies with placebo controls and all that good stuff that makes them, you know, legit. So since there is beta caryophylline in black peppercorns, someone someday decided that if you just suck on them and put them in your mouth, that, you know, if you're too high, because beta caryophylline has been shown to be a CB2 receptor agonist and CB2 receptor agonist can help with anxiety that if you suck on something or put something in your body that has beta caryophylline in it, that it's going to activate these receptors and reduce your anxiety. That's pretty much the foundation to this black peppercorn claim. In theory, this sounds good, but let's break this down. Okay, so first of all, all of these studies that show that beta caryophylline is a CB2 agonist are actually saying that it's considered to be a partial agonist. So the first kind of hole in this black peppercorn theory is that so is THC. So if you're ingesting THC, it is a partial agonist of both CB1 and CB2 receptors. So both of these receptor types are already activated all throughout your central and peripheral nervous system. So if you then consume something that is also a partial agonist to the CB2 receptor that's already essentially lit up and turned on and activated, how would that change anything? It's already turned on. It's like you've got one light with one light bulb and one light switch in a room and you go to turn it on, but it's already on. There's not much more that can be done. The next thing that's important to consider is all the studies that have shown that CB2 receptors can aid in reducing anxiety. The problem in this scenario is that no one's talking about the CB1 receptor. The CB1 receptor is the receptor that is making you feel high or intoxicated. That's the receptor that's being turned on that is triggering the anxiety from too much THC. So yes, a CB2 receptor agonist may help with anxiety by itself when there are no other compounds or drugs or anything else that's present that would be causing that anxiety. So let's say you have just anxiety every day and you're not on any type of drug or, or cannabis or anything like that and you're anxious. If you have a CB2 receptor agonist, could that make you feel less anxious? Yes, it could, it is possible. 
But in this scenario, when we're talking about CB2 receptor agonists as an anti-anxiety agent, THC or other CB1 receptor agonists or any type of thing that could be causing the anxiety over here is not being talked about. So what happens over here by itself isn't exactly relevant in this scenario. Now let's just talk about the black peppercorns. Well, even though beta caryophylline is found in black peppercorns, other terpenes like sabinine or pinene are actually more abundant than black peppercorn. But regardless of that, let's just think about the black peppercorns. Well, how many do you need to suck on? How long? How old should the peppercorns be to make sure that they're not overly oxidized? What size should the black peppercorns be? What variety of black peppercorn? And you know, not just how many you should take, but how many should you take based off of the size of your body and based off of how much THC you've consumed? You see, when you break this down as to something that is dose dependent, for example, we know that two and a half milligrams of THC is effective, even if it doesn't make someone feel high. We also know that 600 milligrams of ibuprofen is effective. The compound and its efficacy is going to be based on the dose and also how it's delivered. Now you have these two compounds, beta caryophylline and THC, that are both considered to be partial agonists of the CB2 receptor. Well, the thing that's important to understand is that although they are partial agonists, there's no data that I've been able to find to show that beta caryophylline is called an antagonist, which means that it kind of latches onto the cell, maybe at a different location, and it inhibits some of the effects of THC or another CB2 agonist. Now to top it all off, although there is research that shows that beta caryophylline is considered a cannabinoid because it's a CB2 partial agonist, there's actually recent research that is a bit conflicting and it shows that beta caryophylline doesn't affect the CB2 receptor nor does it affect the intensity or the potency of THC either. Now what's important to understand is that a lot of these studies are done outside of humans that are alive and functioning with placebo and all these other criteria that would make them really legitimate or at the top of the hierarchy of evidence when it comes to these types of studies. So one study could be done on this type of cell from this type of organism and another study could be done on this type of cell that's intact and on from this type of organism and then another study could be a human and then another study could be a human with placebo and all these different things. So depending on the type of data, depending on the instruments that they're using to measure these things, depending on the cannabinoids, whether they're natural or synthetic that they're comparing them to, all of this matters. So here's the deal. At the end of the day, although I can talk about all of these things, even what I'm saying in a way doesn't really matter. And the reason why is because there is to date, you know, it's like, April 26th of 2023, there is no human, like living human being study with a placebo that involves someone that is too high from consuming Delta 9 THC that then sucks on some black peppercorns or even has beta caryophylline injected into their bloodstream for immediate effects. There is no study that is looking at this to see if beta caryophylline, let alone sucking on black peppercorns, could diminish anxiety from someone that's too high from too much THC. So if you get too high and you wanna suck on some black peppercorns, go for it. The reality is it's most likely that the spicy, gritty, earthy taste in your mouth is just distracting you from your anxiety. And if that helps, that's fantastic. Anyway, whether it's beta caryophylline and black peppercorns or myrcene in mangoes or, you know, pinene in the trees behind me, if someone makes a claim about these things and it's based off of research, you just got to question if it's relevant to the scenario you're in based off of other things that you've consumed.